Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today, I'm speaking with AJ Bianco. AJ is a husband, a father of two amazing boys, an aspiring leader, and a middle school teacher at Harrington Park School. A big fan of the Flip Classroom and blended learning, AJ is also a co-host of another great education podcast called Podcast PD. Follow AJ on Twitter at AJ Bianco and subscribe to Podcast PD on any podcatching app. AJ, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Are you ready to talk education? Tim, I'm always jacked up to talk about education. Let's do this. Love it. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit more about your current context in education? So currently, I am a 7th and 8th grade social studies teacher in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, in a school, Harrington Park School. Uh, Bergen County is about 30 minutes from New York City. And what I do is American history for my 7th grade is US 1. And my eighth grade is a rollover into US2. And in my classroom, I really enjoy uh, working with my students in a student-centered classroom. And as you mentioned, it's the flip classroom. It's blended learning, throw a little personalized learning in there, and really just trying to make the connections to, to real-life activities for my students to make social studies come to life for them. That is so key when it comes to history, and I look forward to hearing more about that, AJ. But first of all, share about a low moment that you faced somewhere along your teaching or education career, and then how you overcame it. You know, that, that, that question is always a tough one. You know, I could throw in there right now, you know, rejection. You know, you always talk about like mm-hmm. going for jobs and not getting the job that you thought. And as an uh, you know, aspiring leader, as you'd mentioned, I'm looking for jobs. And of course, I'm not where I plan to be. It's rejection. But I think the hardest part for me was five years into my teaching career, uh, in the district that I was at, I was actually teaching where I grew up and I got a job as a middle school social studies teacher and I was a budget cut one year and then a budget cut the next year and a budget cut the next year. And they kept pulling me back. Mm. But on my fifth year, they tossed me out of my school as a budget cut and they moved me to two different high schools. And when I found out that was happening, that was like the low moment of my career. And I knew I had to keep going with it. And I was just happy that I had the job. And acting as this educator, I didn't feel like I was myself. I lost the passion that I had going into the career. Uh, I didn't have any follow through. I thought I was going through the motions and just teaching lessons just to get kids prepared for New York State where we had the Regents Regents exam. And that was really hard for me because I didn't really have a mission for myself. I went to school every day just because that was what I was supposed to do. But you know, at one point, I had to turn it around and I was a big, I'm a big sports fan. So I jumped on Twitter to follow my favorite teams and I try to dive in Twitter a little more and see what's out there. And that's where I started finding educators. And it was these educators who had such a passion for teaching that it really woke me up and it really stopped me from leaving the career because I was on the path to going to do something totally different. And these edu stars, and I don't know where exactly, but there were many people out there who were pointing me in great directions to bring some new and interesting material to my classroom. They were the ones who really resurrected me and helped me find that that point of, I can do this and I'm going to be successful anywhere else. AJ, what a story. I can't imagine going through five years, year after year of being punted onto the next school or the next division. (laughs) And I I think you're right. A lot of people would have walked away from the profession, but I'm so glad to hear that you were able to connect with a PLN on Twitter. And if you're out there and you're not following AJ, you need to get on that because the guy is putting out so much inspiring stuff, (laughs) a ton of followers. (laughs) So he has become a star himself, but AJ, another testimony for Twitter, and I love it. Let's talk about the podcast you host with Stacey Lindis and Chris Nessie, and I love Chris. Chris helped me out early on this passion project, Teachers on Fire. So tell us about what you love most about producing the podcast PD show, and what can educators expect to hear when they tune in? Yeah. So first of all, Chris is an amazing guy and he, we call him Mr. Podcast. You know, the guys, all, everything podcast, you, you go you go to Chris Nessie because he's the guy. Uh, podcast PD actually is something that Stacy had uh, blogged about 
a couple years ago and she started a hashtag podcast PD and, you know, we just jumped in there and started talking about it. And as we started talking more about podcasts, you know, it started to become more clear that Stacy, Chris and I really had something that we were passionate about. And as we started doing some Twitter chats with the hashtag, uh, Chris was like, look, we should really make this an actual podcast. And we started out slow. And I think we kind of got our confidence after a while. And if you're listening to Podcast PD, you know, our motto is anytime, anywhere, professional development. And when when we use that motto, we say professional, you know, it's also personal. I, I think the great thing about Podcast PD is if you're a listener, you're going to get uh, the true selves of who Chris, Stacy, and I are. You're going to understand like what we stand for, what we are passionate about with education, what we want to see changed. And you're, you're going to figure out that we are actually real people on this podcast. And then we're not faking it. You know, there's humor, there's good times. We're, we're really positive about things, even if we don't have to be. But, you know, the, the show really can go any which way. And that's what I love about it. We can talk about technology. We can talk about techniques or we can talk about methodologies you know, we're not tied down to one thing. And that's what makes Podcast PD really important for us. That we can go any which way and have a really good time talking about the things that, that have been our experiences and the things that we love. AJ, what else besides podcasting and, and maybe besides teaching history at the middle school level, what else excites you about education today? Well, at the middle school level, I mean, everything excites me. I mean, our kids are always wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and they always want to get, get involved, right? Isn't that what middle school is? No, it's always, it's always a completely different journey. Who knows what's going on in middle school? <laughs> but in education today, I, I got to be honest, I love, first of all, with Twitter, PLN that we have, that we've all kind of jumped on. Um, we have so many people out there who are willing to share a voice and the idea of podcasting. And Tim, that's why I was gravitating towards your podcast. I love the voice that you have and the and other ideas that you're sharing. Thanks, Matt. And, and podcasts, hey, you're doing a great job. And, and I hope the listeners understand like how tough this is and how how much time you are putting into it for make a great show. I appreciate it. And, and it's people, hey, you deserve it. And it's people like you who, you know, are really sharing the voice and are not afraid to be like, who's listening? You know, who knows who's listening? Who cares who's listening? You're sharing stories. You're sharing your story. You're great, getting some great interviews. And I think education is really improving because we have so many people out there who are taking those chances, taking the chances to share their stories, share their lessons, share their passions. Teachers are starting to do more in their classrooms because there's no fear anymore. And our students are starting to take chances too because they are modeling what their teachers are doing. And I think that's really what makes education today really great. And if we can push that message down to our kids in college, those pre-service teachers, I think those are the ones who are really going to start to shine and who are really going to bring education up to where it's starting to go. You know, we have so much technology in our classroom. It's like a technology renaissance. Uh, I love the things that our students can create. They're not just consumers, you know, because you think about it. When we were students, everything that we were doing was lecture, 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 notes, notes, notes. You know, our classrooms aren't like that anymore. Our classrooms are hands-on. Our classrooms are engaged students who are really excited about what's next. And I think that is what really excites me about education. You know, AJ, I was just speaking with Dr. Sam Fesich in a previous episode, and she is a professor who works with pre-service teachers, and she is huge on Twitter and bid building that PLN even before these pre-service teachers get into their first job. And I think, man, back when you and I were just starting out, we didn't have that level of connectedness. I mean, we felt isolated we didn't feel as supported. And today, you're absolutely right. There's just no reason for teachers out there not to take full advantage of the support that is available. I agree, I agree completely. Let's talk about your professional goals and your practice for this year. Can you share with us about one area that you're working on somewhere where you're trying to grow? Yeah. So I think for me as an aspiring leader, I think what I'm really trying to to do is really take in, to read, to learn, and to understand like everything that it means to be a leader, what a servant leader looks like and how to help those around them. And I'm grabbing all these different books and I'm trying to just figure out the little things that you might not miss, that you might miss if you're not in leadership every day. You know, as an educator, of course, I'm working on my classroom pr uh, craft. I love flipping the classroom. I love blended learning. I'm trying to incorporate PBL this year. So my students are problem solving and thinking outside the box. So for me, I'm just really digging in and trying to grab as much as I can to, to learn. And that's really what education is, right? I'm a lifelong learner. And I'm trying to just figure out what my path is and how I'm going to get there. 
And that's that's really all it is right now. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm right there with you, man, on the PBL, and it sounds actually like you're further ahead than I am. So I need to be coming to you, AJ, when I get a little stuck for ideas. But I love that, and I, I actually want to dig further into the books, but I know that's coming a little bit later here. In the interview, <laughs> so look forward to hearing about that. I know my wife and I have been both really into Brene Brown lately. And there's so many Mm. other good leaders out there, but let's move on and talk about AJ, you as a human being. So outside of education, if we can go there, some people really have trouble with that question, but dude, what's another area of learning and passion for you outside of the school? Yeah. So it's really hard to turn off that, that education. It is. You know, when, when we leave the school, I never just leave the school, right? Everything continues on. Uh, but for me, you know, I have two young boys and I have a, a third on the way. So for me, I love watching these two little guys play, learn from each other, uh, really get involved with the Legos and, and drawing and coloring and watching that, you know, that that's, that's my life. But when they're not doing what they're doing for me is sports and of course, superheroes. So I'm constantly trying to research and we're watching shows about superheroes so I can teach the boys that these are life choices when you grow up. This is the superhero that you want to be. This is not just fantasy. This is going to be your life. You're going to be a superhero. Um, But for me, honestly, superheroes in sports, I love the Yankees. I love the Jets. uh, I love to play golf. So I'm constantly just trying to keep up with my teams and learn some new ideas for golf. But you know, there's there's never enough time for all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you mentioned the Jets, and I'm sure you're familiar with the name Gary V. Oh, of course. I love Gary V. <laughs> and I like to listen to Gary once in a while, and it is so funny to hear him obsess about the Jets. I mean, I just I just wonder what is that guy going to do once he finally achieves his goal of buying the Jets. <laughs> Hopefully, he does something that that no other owner has done before. So that that's I'm hoping for that. I'm pushing yes. for the Gary V. Do it. <laughs> exactly. And then AJ, I love talking to guests on my podcast about how they make it all work. So share with us about a personal habit or a hack maybe that contributes to your success. Yeah, for me, I'm my hack is I'm extremely competitive. You know, everything I do is I, I want to be I, I want to be the best. You know, I know it's hard to be on top of everything, but I really want things to work out in my benefit. You know, when it comes to a lesson, I want the kids to be engaged. I want them to love it. I don't want them to just like it. I want them to love it. I want my class to be the favorite class. You know, it's like that kind of thing. It's like that drive in me that I, I that competitive notion of keep going until it's perfect, and then when it is perfect keep pushing some more. You know, I I wish I can like be Derek Jeter where everything I touch is magical, but I'm getting to the point where I just feel comfortable in my own skin. That sounds like you're teaching like a pirate and I love it. I've, I've got a bit of that, maybe not as much as you AJ, but (laughs) that works. Now we're going to move into some quick picks and what we're doing here is sort of asking the question, who are the voices and the resources that are shaping your practice and inspiring your thinking today? So We're going to start at Twitter. We've already sung the praises of Twitter PLNs. Tell us about someone we should follow there and share why they've been inspiring you lately. Yeah, there are some amazing edu stars out there, these rock star educators. I wish I could name all of them. Um, Follow follow me on Twitter and I'll I'll make sure that you can find these people. But I'm going to name two for you right now who are my Jersey guys. Uh, Rich Hazler, who's on Twitter at Rich Hazler. And then my buddy, another principal in New Jersey, uh, Kevin Carroll. These two guys, I watch what they're doing as leaders, and it is amazing. And all schools should run like these two guys run their schools in New Jersey. I'm so impressed by them. Look forward to following them if I'm not already. And then next, AJ, point us to an ed tech tool that you currently love using in your classroom space or, or maybe somewhere else in your professional practice. Uh, my go-to is Adobe Spark Video and Adobe Spark Post those two in my classroom have just been the best things for my students to do creation wise. I absolutely love it. I use it in my life as well. And Adobe Spark video and Adobe Spark post are two tools that go hand in hand. And it's fantastic. AJ, I'm doing an eighth grade media course this year and we're using we video. And I have to tell you, I haven't used Adobe Spark video and maybe you would have to use we video to do a true comparison here, but is there something that, well, first of all, have you tried we video? I have used we video. I'm actually, I do a podcasting class and a video creation class with, with students from Richmond. So how would you compare we video versus Adobe spark? 
so we video, I think is a fantastic tool for editing and like making that long video, Adobe spark video. I would just kind of compare it to like a PowerPoint or a slideshow on steroids. Uh, you know, it flashes in and has that writing, uh, it's quick notes. It's got voiceovers. So I think if you want that quick little taste, like that teaser, I think that's a great tool for that. That's a great summary. Okay. I'm checking that out as well. No, you got to check it out. AJ recommend a book, one that you've been reading lately, or maybe one of your all time faves and tell us why you recommend it. So the summer I sat down and, and my favorite book, uh, is an author by an author, John Gordon, and I'm sure everybody's kind of grabbed onto him. Uh, the energy bus has been a tremendous bus to really pick you up and get that negativity out of your mind. So I got to recommend the energy bus for anybody out there. Okay. Heard that one before. And I need to add that to my Kindle. I think that's, that's enough votes for that one. John Gordon, I do follow on Twitter and he is a super positive guy. Super. Uh, and then AJ, you are a podcast host. So this will be fun. Suggest so another education podcast other than ours, right? That we need to add to our daily commute. Yeah, this is, this is a hard one for me. <laughs> if you listen to podcast BD, I continuously am giving you podcasts to listen to, but I'm going to give you a great podcast right now by a guy named Dan Krinas, and his podcast is The Leader of Learning. Uh, check him out. I think you'll love what he brings to the table. The last two questions, AJ, are in video. Tell us about a YouTube channel that you enjoy and we should subscribe to and explain why. So a YouTube channel that I like is, it's called How It Should Have Ended. And basically it's animation of how some comic book movies and other movies should have ended. And it's, it's just a joke. And I really love it because all these videos that all these movies you watch, like, Oh, I wish you ended differently. Well, these guys give you that alternate ending. That's a little silly. Okay. Very fun. And last question, AJ is not education related. I just ask it because I love to hear what other people are tuning into. So on those days when you've got no energy left for anything productive, what are you watching on Netflix right now? So my wife and I are both comic book fans and we try to watch all these different shows, but because of the time that we have, we don't always get that opportunity. So we are binging all these different CW shows for Arrow, Flash, uh, Black Lightning. Uh, we actually are about to sit down and watch Daredevil season three, even though it's been canceled going forward. We have to catch up on our Daredevil. So it's comic books for us. All right. Well, my boys would be right there with you. Love the Daredevil. AJ, this has been a blast, man. And every time I hear about the Jets going forward, I'll be thinking of you rooting them on. What are the best ways for the listeners to follow you and get more of that great content? So anyway, you want to follow me, just type in AJ Bianco. You'll find me on Twitter. I'm at AJ Bianco. Uh, my blog or my website, whatever you want to call it, is ajbianco.me. Instagram is AJ Bianco, Voxer, AJ Bianco. Uh, Inst uh, what is it? LinkedIn, AJ Bianco. I'm all over the place. So type my name in, you'll check me out. Well, that sounds like some solid branding that Gary V would approve of. Sounds good, <laughs> AJ. Thanks so much for sharing your time with the podcast today. This has been fun and I've got some things to go check out. Thanks to you. So take care and dude, let's talk again soon. Tim, this is great. I appreciate it. All right, man. Later. Later. Thanks for listening to this episode of Teachers on Fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, and follow us on Twitter at Teachers on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.